Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're gonna jump right in into using MASH, a very, very powerful procedural animation toolkit inside of Maya, directed for motion graphics artists. So first thing we wanna do is get a fresh piece of geometry here, just to make sure that we don't have any existing history on what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna duplicate this mesh by hitting Command D, and I'm gonna use this and say, uh, original logo. You can call it whatever kind of makes sense to you. I'm gonna hide this original SVG mesh because we don't really need that anymore. So now that I have this, I want to go over and make sure I have the mesh toolkit first loaded. So you can go to window settings, preferences, plugin manager, and scroll down to, I believe mesh is its own kind of section here. It says uh, plugins, mesh plugins. You wanna make sure those are loaded. That'll give you a, a menu inside the animation uh, tool uh, menu over here. So now we have MASH. Let's click that and we have a few different options. Now, when you think about voxelizing uh, a logo, which is what we're gonna start with and voxelize this logo with uh, a bunch of different cubes, there's a couple different ways we can work, but you know, we're not actually gonna use this in the MASH network per se. What we're gonna use is a square that we're gonna uh, fill this object with. So what we need is a cube or a square. So we have a cube now and we wanna use this in our MASH network. This is what we're actually gonna use uh, and create the MASH network from. So let's go to MASH, create MASH network and look at the options that we have. We have a geometry type mesh instancer and what I'm gonna choose is mesh because of uh, some of the other options we'll use later on with dynamics. So I'm gonna apply and close, and now you can see that we've made this uh, mesh network. And these are just the default values. This doesn't really mean anything to us here, these 10 across, that's just um, the default that they give you. And you can you know change that over here on the attribute editor. This is kind of where we're gonna get to all of our different menu options here and what we can add to our mesh network later. So let's jump into the distribute area and take a look at, you know, by default, it gives us linear. So we can, you know, this is where we're adjusting that linear distribution and how many and how far. But what we want, if you can remember, is we wanna voxelize this logo. So we need to go to distribution type and choose mesh. And what it's asking down here in this uh, warning is, please connect a mesh. So we need to tell it what what mesh do you want to distribute this uh, cube into? And of course, it's this logo. So we don't wanna select it because then it will you know, deselect uh, the mesh network that we're trying to bring it into. So let's make sure we're still on mesh and we can see this input mesh area here on the right. And what we wanna do is go over to the outliner, which if you don't have open, you can go to Windows Outliner. And what we wanna do is middle mouse drag the original logo into the input mesh and let go. So now you can see it's distributed the squares inside of that mesh. And it's choosing a method of scatter by default, but what we wanna do is voxel, right? And you can tell it's not really looking the way we want it to because it's very the, the cube is very big. And there's a couple different ways we could address that. The easiest one would be to scale the original cube that we made and it hit it whenever you make a mash network by default it's going to hide the original object so we could just unhide it if we wanted by hitting shift h after we select it in the outliner and then hit r to uh, get to the scale tool and just scale this down so we want to choose kind of a voxel shape that is going to match the kind of density that we want and we can play around with this after uh, we go back into voxel go to the voxel settings here that we can use this little menu to drop down and decrease the voxel size. So that's basically saying um, how big of a voxel size are we trying to fill up here? And we wanna try to find something that's fairly representative of our shape um, and not so big that you can't tell what it is. So let's choose something like this. So we're gonna kinda go back and forth between scaling the actual cube down and choosing the right voxel size so that the distribution between the shapes, I'm basically looking at these gaps. And 
you know, you can choose this to be different for yourself, but I'm trying to figure out, you know, what kind of gap do I want to have here? And I don't think I want to have very much of a gap. So I'm going to keep dragging this down until just about there's no gap. And I can start typing in numbers here as well. So I'm just going to take away that eight and that looks pretty darn close to what I want. I think I'm going to, I think I can get it even closer and choose maybe 255. Nope, and that's a little too low, 258. Yeah, it's getting really close in here. And these could be different values for you. It all just kind of depends. So I just wanna make sure that they're not overlapping, but they're just really close to each other. And that's just my personal preference. You don't have to choose that for your own logo, but um, that's just kind of what I'm going with. Um, actually, I'm just gonna back that off one little thousandths of a degree. So if we scale, if we if we kind of zoom back here, it does represent our logo pretty well. And the kind of reveal that we're going to do when all of these get wiped away, I think will be a really cool visualization of seeing kind of uh, the digital uh, version of it being voxelized down into its more clean uh, vector, you know, smooth edge version. So keep in mind too, that the reason why I'm going about this uh, animation in this kind of arc directed way, this specific creative idea is that this logo is for uh, my uh, a school called Digital Creator School. So when I'm thinking about this logo or, or you, the logo, this is what you should be thinking about when the logo that you choose is what type of animation represents uh, this logo well and the animation will speak to what it embodies the brand, right? So when I was thinking about this logo, Digital Creator School, you know, I thought about all types of things of, you know, what's digital. Think of like rasterization, vector graphics, voxels, you know, all these types of different visual aids that uh, and tools that uh, help display and visualize digital art and digital content. So that's why I chose to go in this art direction of using this voxelization of basically building up this logo with voxels and then wiping them away. Um, with dynamics that we'll do later, but that's kind of the idea and the thought process that I decided to go to go with. And just to reemphasize that, here's the original idea was, right? And so your idea can be very simple too when you first start out, and then you can kind of finesse it more as you learn Maya better and as you kind of work on the idea. But for this course, we're gonna go, you know, you know, no matter what logo you're using, we're all gonna learn the same version right now because this is about learning the tools. But we need a specific example uh, to make this seem practical, right? Um, I just don't wanna go through and show you what every single button does here because that won't be very helpful. Let's uh, you know, do a very specific art-directed idea and then that way you can pick up a lot of the tools along the way and still make something pretty cool um, and usable, and hopefully you can find opportunity as I'm teaching you this to branch off and do your own kind of thing as well. But for this first time around, just follow along with what I'm doing. But I was I just wanted to take a second to explain why am I, you know, animating this this way? Why am I using voxelizations? Well, it's because it kind of fits with the brand of this logo. So in the next lesson, we are going to work on adding some animation to these voxeled shapes now. And I can't wait to get going in that lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.